Bandits, highwaymen, brigands, thieves, outlaws, gang members, desperados, or raiders, whatever name they may prefer to go by, odds are two things are true about them. You've certainly killed your share while playing Dungeons and Dragons, and they are easily the least exciting foe for players to fight. But fear not for all you dungeon masters out there, I have a few DM tips that will help spice up these saltine crackers into something that will throw your veteran players off and give them a little life at the table. Let's talk about how to kill your party with bandits. Now usually this is the part of the video where I dive a little deeper into the lore and history of our monster, specifically in the Forgotten Realms, but Let's be honest, there really isn't a great way to do that with bandits. Nothing about them is unique in the Forgotten Realms. However, that doesn't mean we can't look into what life is like for a bandit or a member of a thieves guild to ascertain a good jumping off point to understand them a little bit better. First, let's talk about who the bandit is. Who actually decides to take up the life of a murderous brigand and who kills and plunders whatever they can get their hands on? What are the traits of an armed robber? I mean, this is not a burglar who is hoping to outwit and avoid being caught when they steal from someone. This is someone who goes into a theft with the mindset of, I'm going to get what I want and if people get in my way, I'll just end their life without hesitation because my needs and desires are more important than their life. I mean, we talk a lot about monsters and races in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition that are the epitome of evil, but I think it's fair to say that that type of outlook on life is about as evil as it comes. So first off, I would say that bandits typically will share three traits in common. Self-importance, shamelessness, and they are at their core immoral. Understanding their mindset here will go a long way to help us as dungeon masters and game masters when portraying them in our games and when writing them into campaign plots and story arcs. But there are additional aspects that they usually experience before just diving headfirst into a lawless life of murder and strife. I mean, usually these are people who will come from terrible backgrounds. These are not typically a noble son or even the child of a traveling merchant, blacksmith, or other tradesman. These are people who have been outcast by society or who have always been a little too intimate with hunger and lived through much colder winters than others do without any proper training and a skill like carpentry, farming, or animal husbandry. So when opportunities presented themselves, they took them. They're hungry now. They needed shelter now. The thought of being caught and tortured to death publicly at the prisoner's carnival in Luskin is outweighed by the immediacy of their needs today. When a careless drunkard stumbles into a dark alleyway with a few too many coins, who are they to pass up on this opportunity? So defining them as opportunists would certainly be a fitting description. However, they don't all have to be absolute cutthroats. When you think about these people and how they come together to form these gangs, sometimes it's their loyalty that brings them together. It's their loyalty to one another as a group of societal outcasts that creates that attraction and bond to one another. The stark contrast of daily life between trying to struggle for your individual survival versus being able to count on your fellow consorts to gather wood, keep watch out on the road, and even simply just cook a meal that they share with you is significant. And it would be hard for anyone to completely refrain from forming close bonds and friendships with at least some of those companions, even amid their terrible acts. This is something to keep in mind of where you want to take NPC dialogue with your players and say a captured bandit, should the PCs attempt to extract some information from them during an interrogation. Will the bandit be an opportunist selling out his gang or will he lie and attempt to give misinformation to protect his friends? Will he try to cut a deal to save his own life with the PCs or will he even offer to parlay in favor of the party with his gang in an attempt to save them from sure death against a group of adventurers who he believes will outmatch his friends? Now let's shift over and talk about a few DM tips that dungeon masters can use to spice up bandits and give the players a run for their money. But first, it's sponsor time, cause I got bills to pay. Huge shout out to today's sponsor, Deck of Many. If you guys haven't checked out Deck of Many, these guys make really cool gaming accessories to just make gaming at your table 
just easier. Okay, they have spell decks, they have condition decks, they actually have a deck of many things, which is super fun to physically hand out to your players. They have some really great monster cards, so if you are one of those DMs who likes to use a lot of different monsters in one combat and you hate flipping back and forth to all of those different monsters in the book or trying to stop and write out all their stats, uh, they have decks for those as well, so you can lay them out nice, clean, and easy, and it just makes gaming just that much more simple. I'm gonna throw a link down to them below where you guys can go and check them out. Personally, I would recommend the blank monster cards. That's one that I have found to be very useful at my table. So uh, yeah, go check them out and thank you Deck of Many for being a part of the Taking 20 team. The first tip I have for Dungeon Masters is one that I'm betting a lot of DMs don't take the time to consider, and I'm certainly guilty of this as well, is to give them a structure. Unless you are literally talking about a pair or trio of highwaymen, most bandits or gangs will have some sort of structure in place. A simple structure to use is the 136 or the 1335, meaning that you have one leader at the top, three close confidants to them, each in charge of about six additional thugs for a total organizational size of about 19. Or for a larger person organization, you have one leader, three close confidants or generals, each with three squad leaders who are in charge of about five more gang members out in the field. Obviously, I wouldn't worry too much about calling them squad leaders, but for your DM notes, having an idea of the overall size of a gang or a group of pirates will help you understand the full capabilities of your bandits and help you understand how to use them in combat. Did the players just drop the bandit you secretly assigned as the lieutenant? Maybe that triggers the rest to flee immediately. Did your players capture one intent on interrogating them for more information? If it was just a regular footman, maybe they know the hideout's location, but not the reason their group has been raiding the shops of glassmakers in town. Or maybe the footman has never even seen the leader and has no idea where the hideout is because they were only recruited by one of the three generals. This could lead to a little more mystery for your main villain and hint to your players that they are dealing with a much larger organization than just a few bandits hitting local shops in town. Which leads us into my next tip, giving them a bit more mystery. Bandits are bland for several reasons, but one of the biggest, in my opinion, is that they are just so predictable. We get it, you're bad guys who kill and steal the end. But if we can find ways to add a little mystery to them, we can make them a more memorable encounter for our veterans who've been playing D&D for years. Maybe they've been choosing crazy random targets in town and leaving a corny calling card like a, a rose or a black coin on the body. How are the targets being selected and what is their connection? Maybe they have infiltrated the mass lords of Waterdeep and managed to get a glyph of warding spell onto the dais of the open lord during a pivotal meeting. And for all you Game of Thrones fans out there, giving them a stoic mask like the Sons of the Harpy that they don at a public execution scheduled for one of their own before they start just going on a rampage, could certainly create enough mystery and unease for your players to make them feel like they are up against a much more dangerous foe than your typical bandit, even though you as a DM haven't really done anything with the stat block at this point. Which brings me to my next tip, give them branding. Now I don't mean brand them with a P like Jack Sparrow, I mean give them something to make them feel unique. It doesn't matter if you're throwing in just a few bandits in an ambush to break up a long road travel and heavy roleplay session. Give them at least one aspect that stands out. Maybe it's their weapon choice and they all use pikes or nunchucks and throwing stars. Maybe it's their clothing and they all wear a green bandana with a silver bear's claw on it. Or maybe it's their race and you set an ambush field with a bunch of gnomes or rogue dwarves and at an absolute minimum, give them a group name. Even if it's just a color plus an animal like the black toads, the ruby vipers or the golden macaws, just give them a name. Having them scream out, FOR THE GREY GOATS, could even be a fun way to incorporate a little whimsy into your game and keep the mood more lighthearted at the table while your players mop up another encounter with bandits. Speaking of mixing up the races, the next tip I have for you DMs is to mix in those monsters. People 
are boring to fight in D&D. They stand there and attack and that's about it. But there's no reason that we can't add some flair to our bandits by mixing them in with some monsters. How cool would it be for your players to be in the middle of fighting off some bandits with crossbows on two sides of the road when suddenly two trolls come rolling in over the small hill and charge in to join them, brandishing that same green bandana and bear's claw? Now you've created a much higher and more challenging CR encounter that's more than just a highwayman ambush or fight with some trolls. And each group of enemies gives the players a completely different fill in combat. The gnomes stay in partial cover on the road's banks, firing down with arrows and crossbow bolts, and the trolls move up to attack casters and destroy the wagon's wheels to disable it, knowing they can retreat and return later fully regenerated with the cover of night if the wagon cannot move forward. While your players, now stuck and trying to figure out what the best course of action is, also will be wondering what the hell is going on with your bandit trope completely flipped upside down after being attacked by a group of gnome highwaymen and a pair of trolls. That is the definition of a memorable encounter. Instead of throwing another gang of humans at your players, mix your gang up with elven women, male tritons, and even a few doppelgangers. You don't even need to come up with a good reason for the strange mix. Your players will be too busy trying to kill them to figure out why all the males in the gang happen to be tritons. And don't be afraid to give your gang and group of bandits a Goliath. Now, I don't mean a literal Goliath. I mean a Goliath like David and Goliath. Give them that one big bruiser, that absolute wrecking force that stuns the players when it shows up. Negotiations with some brigands out on the road asking for a toll might take a significant turn when suddenly an Oni shows up. How do your players react when they realize the elven woman demanding their weapons has her own shield guardian? Speaking of mixing things up, let's talk about adding in abilities. For your more combat-oriented players, and they exist out there in your games, one of the reasons bandits suck to fight is because they don't do anything unique. They're typically just people who exist as an HP pool the players have to dwindle down until they can move forward in the story. It's awful. And at higher levels, just adding more HP to your bandits is its just not going to cut it. So an easy way to change up their feel and flow in combat is to very simply give them a class ability. We don't have to completely reskin an arc mage or restat out a bandit by adding in PC levels, but rather we can just grab one of the abilities from a player class and just slap it on the bandits without altering the CR too much to give them a fresh coat of paint. So grab the Barbarian's Reckless Attack or the rogue Sneak Attack feature, or instead of damage, how would the players react if suddenly your meager bandits had Bardic Inspiration dice or cast Healing Word on one another as bonus actions? What if one of them cast a level one sleep spell on the players and the reeling cleric already low on HP fell into a slumber without the opportunity to even make a save? Or if suddenly a little pushover gang member cast web or invisibility or even spent key points to snatch the rogue's crossbow bolt out of the air and sling it back at her? There's no rule to say your NPCs have to be full-fledged statted foes with class levels just to add a cool ability already in the game and slap it on them. And I promise you, if your street gang suddenly starts catching arrows and firing them back with key points at the players and giving each other bardic inspiration dice, your players are going to be surprised. Okay, let's shift over into some more story element things we can do with our bandits for DMs looking to build campaigns or even smaller side arcs revolving around these bandits. The first tip I have is to give them a cause and make them relatable. Not all bandits in our games have to be just absolute cutthroats. Sure, they are usually terrible, evil people, but that doesn't mean that they can't have some sort of goal that goes beyond just robbing and killing people. Naturally, we have the good old trope of Robin Hood as just one example of what I'm talking about. By giving them a cause your players might sympathize with, we've created a much more complex encounter. But typically we as Dungeon Masters will still want to be able to create some sort of conflict with our players beyond, well, they're actually good guys who only rob from the rich. 
So what if instead the bandits are specifically hassling a local lord and all their subjects and trade caravans, only for the players to find out the individual leading the brigands is the brother or sister to the lord in charge, wanting to overthrow and drive out the lord who they see as corrupted by an oligarchy in order to replace them and expel the greedy oligarchs. The bandits might even be escalating their tactics to a more deadly level with the noble having become blinded by their original goals. Now the players might be caught in the middle of the early trappings of a civil war should the leader's identity become known. And we've turned the please help us stop this local gang quest into a more rich story arc. Will the players side with the bandits after digging deeper into the Lord's background? Will they infiltrate and try to wipe out the bandits from the inside? Will they try to reason with the gang leader and show them that they too are being used by their own captains just as their sibling is being controlled by the oligarchs? Will the leader recognize their terrible course and then ask the players for help in destroying the organization that they helped build? And don't forget, you can also put your bandits at odds with the players even more directly than that. Maybe the bandits are looking for a lost treasure that might help bring prosperity to a failing town. With the town's vassal too incompetent to stop it, they're taking matters into their own hands, robbing every merchant traveling the main road until they can discover it. And after seeing the players wield a powerful magical sword, the brigands decide it will suit their needs better and they attempt to take it from the PCs. Slap in a few little Tim stories and a few coughs from the bandits once combat has stopped and the players will probably feel like outright murder of these highwaymen might not be the best answer for their conscience. Speaking of which, don't forget to make your bandits real people. It's too easy at times for your players to justify being murder hobos. These guys tried to kill us so we'll just kill them instead. If you want to throw a quick reality check at them to remind them of the fact that they just killed a person, slap a little toy in one of your bandits' pockets. Throw in a little half-carved wooden princess with to Bethany, my little princess, with all of the rest of the loot your players are too eager to scavenge from the bodies. This is a dirty little DM tip, and while it might not resonate with all of your players, it just takes that one player for it to hit them like a brick wall for that to be very, very satisfying. And finally, along with making them seem like real people, make them vindictive. As your players hack and slash their way through a small group of bandits, they probably won't think too much about it. These are bad people and we're helping the world by eliminating them. But your bandits and brigands are bad people and people have families and connections. Your players will most likely be proud of the work they've done, seeking out a further reward from whomever the bandits were originally a problem for. And it isn't a stretch to think that word of their deeds would be public knowledge, whether because your players were boasting of their works in a tavern or simply because people talk. And a small band of adventurers who stopped the black toads would make for good local gossip. But when the petty and vile older brother finds out his sister is dead because of the players, he vows to avenge her, bringing in a much larger force with him and stalking them for weeks before making his move at a time when the party is most vulnerable and when the wizard seems out of resources. Maybe he even takes the job of the hut route and sends out several groups of devious mercs to bring him the players' heads. Now your players are getting constantly attacked with their tavern food being unknowingly poisoned and they may not even know what the reason is. This could turn a simple scuffle with some bandits in the middle of a much larger campaign into a fantastic secondary arc. And if he manages to finally come face to face with the party before they escape, that could even become a catalyst for him to team up with the main campaign's big bad evil guy and become a reoccurring villain later down the line. So now I wanna ask you guys, what are some of the most interesting and creative ways either you or your dungeon master has used bandits and gangs in your games? Do you have a really interesting gang composition with a cool racial makeup? And can you come up with any more sympathetic causes as a background for your bandits? I cannot wait to read the comments this week.
I, of course, want to give a huge shout out to all of the amazing patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. Guys, it's because of you I can keep making these videos, and it means so much to me. It really, really does. So thank you, thank you for all your support. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more content while snagging some extra rewards like maps every month or jumping in a monthly call with me, whatever, uh, a bunch of those rewards are available over at welcomeadventures.com, and you can slide over there to check them out. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I put out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more, so if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time.